Hey guys, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. Uh, I'm doing a series, it's called How to Sing Like. And in the series, next up is Michael Matichevic from Steelheart. Uh, before we get started, if you don't mind, please like and subscribe to my channel, that'd be really cool. Uh, don't forget to ring the bell so I can keep new cool videos coming your way. And I have a singing course. That course is called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else. You can find it right here at KenTamplinVocalAcademy.com where we discuss and negotiate how to get to all of these really cool places these singers are singing in. So. With that said, I wanna talk about Michael because Michael and I, our voices couldn't be more polar opposite unless like I was a low bass singer or something. But as a baritone singer and as him a really high tenor that sings in the alto, contralto, slash even soprano range, uh, we sing very, very differently yet because of my technique and because I understand uh, the mechanics of what it takes to get up into that range, I am able to sing in his registration. Now, I don't think that Michael would actually be able to come down and sing as husky in my registration, though I am able to get up into his registration. So there's hope for us baritones, right? Um, and I, I'm doing this because um, I'm gonna do one version, excuse me, of, of my uh, me singing She's Gone, and then I'm gonna do another version of uh, Katie, uh, one of my students of another Steel Heart tune. So, uh, never let you go. So before we get started on all this, I want to explain a couple things. Some things are not as they seem when we sing, okay? And this is a really good example of that. Now, why I said that I'm a polar opposite singer to Michael Matichevic is because he can reside in these really high altitudes of singing. Now, here's what I mean by that. Um, when I sing most of my stuff in my tessitura or my normal range, it's down pretty low. If I'm way down around an F sharp four, that's kind of about, you know, where a normal high berry would just be kind of at his limit, right? However, in this case, I go up an octave and everything in between, and it seems like I'm able to pull it off fairly effortlessly, though it's not effortlessly. But I also want to mention a couple things. Now, in my singing course, I discuss this thoroughly, and that's this. When we set our voices up, as, as, as you go through the mechanics of understanding what it takes to set different vocal fox or types or ranges uh, that you wanna set your voice up for, if you understand how to do it, if you've built up the muscle memory for it and everything that goes along with that, um, you can actually set your voice up for different registrations like Michael Matichevic. I'm gonna give you an exact example of this in a second. Now, where that gets interesting is it's actually easier for me to sing in Michael's registration once I've warmed up to it, it, so long as I stay in that registration. In other words, as long as there's not a lot of expanse of range. So if I'm singing really low and I have to go up high, it makes it a lot more difficult. The next thing is, is if I sing a bottom part kind of heavy with a lot of dirt or distortion or power or whatever, it makes it also very challenging to release and to relax in order to be able to, to release the weight, to shed the weight and get rid of the muscle mass and girth in the throat and go through the passaggio and go into head voice and come back and forth, okay? Now, I'm gonna play Play the track and I'm gonna describe some things. So let's just get right into it. I'll play it and I'll, I'll discuss this as we go. Here we go. She's gone. Okay, now let me let me show you something. Uh, she's gone out of my life. I was wrong. I'm to blame. I was so untrue. I can't live without a love. Right. If you notice, my voice is very small. You're going, wow, you know, you're right. Your speaking voice is even a lot lower than what you just sang, the, you know, the, the timbre of the registration you just sang in. That's because I've set my voice up nice and high to sing within that placement, within that registration. Now, this is really, really important because it's what enables me and gives me the ability to sing high. Now, there's a lot to this, guys. I, I know I'm just like, you know, zipping through, oh, that's so easy, I should be able to do it. Yeah, you should. 
should, but there's a lot of steps in between and what's required to do this. I cover all this in my singing course. There's no way I can t teach you all this right now, but you, cause there's a lot of steps to get there, but I'm just sh casting a vision for you, for you to be able to see yourselves doing this. So let's continue for the next verse. Cause I want to explain something else. Now, if you notice, I'm singing a little heavy on it, heavier than Michael does in the verse. Go back and listen to the original, and you're know, talking about, you know, but so I'm going, in my life, there's just an empty space. Oh, my dreams, they all belong. Right. I'm bringing in a little tone, a little girth, a little mass, a little distortion, right? Kind of early on. What that does though, is it forces me to have to make a decision. I'm about to sing this next part and I gotta get up really high, but I just kind of over sang the bottom a little bit, right? Now, I've gotta get rid of the mass, muscle mass, I gotta get rid of this weight, and I've gotta be able to relax my throat in order to be able to release to get up in through the passaggio. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna tell you I did rehearse this a couple times to pick out you know, what corners I could take fast, where my stop signs were, where my green lights are. So I paced myself through the song to kinda know when I could play with it a little bit, when I had to kinda be careful, cause if I didn't pace myself, I won't be able to finish, okay? So we're about to hit the note where you go through the passaggio to get up in head voice, and I do it seamlessly. So let me play it first, and then I wanna show you some interesting things that might be, um, some things are not as they seem. It's a little deceptive, so check this out. Here we go. Okay, now, with that note, there's several things at play. The first thing is, is that you probably think I'm just pulling all this weight up and then I'm just belting way up into my head voice. Some people think that. Some people think that it's magic and I'm able to, you know, just uh, somehow transition back and forth. And, and there's some of that, it's not magic, it's hard work of learning about, you know, a mixed voice and how to bridge the gap between, or bridge, you know, a fuse together chest and head seamlessly. But I also had to grow my head voice in such a way that when I do make that passaggio connection, it matches the exact tonal qualities of my chest voice. Now I cover that thoroughly in my singing course, in the head voice portion of my singing course. But before you do that and try to go to that, you have to build a good foundation of chest voice first to hold up the pillars to accommodate this, or you'll be able, you're gonna have moving targets along the way. You're not gonna be able to do this with consistency and um, it, over time, if you don't build up your chest voice, that will atrophy or become weak over time and it won't sustain those notes. So I wanna play this again, but I wanna make a couple more real quick comments to get you to watch this and listen to this as we go. The first thing is, because I'm a high baritone, I chose, because I oversang the bottom a little bit and I paced myself, to make the second note in. No, that note. Yeah, I even chirped right there. Right, that second note in, and I'm gonna have to warm up a little bit to do this, to, to describe this to you, because I'm gonna try to do this in different registrations so you can hear it. Um, or not registrations, but notes in through this registration. Okay, so as I go through this, I wanna point out that um, I'm forcing my throat to stay open, or I've trained it to stay open, number one. I'm transitioning on the second note in, where I'm connecting chest and head, right? But, I also know that the very next note that I come into after this note is a belted chest voice note. Now I'm gonna let it play after this so you can hear what I'm talking about. But the first thing I wanna do is play it again and I'm gonna go like this and show you where I actually connect into my head voice. Watch, here we go. Now, I hit that lady in that full voice, right? All right, so. Right, so my first note is a chest resonant sounding note. It's a belted chest, chest note. 
but I'm able to, to control my throat from spasming and chirping and hearing that yodel through the passaggio. All right, do it with me. Try this. Try doing this with me. Go. Like go in and out with sliders and through the passaggio and learn to connect that seamlessly and you'll go, oh my gosh, this is like magic. I had no idea that this, this all this technique is going on here. Now, in fairness, Michael doesn't do that. Michael actually belts a lot of chest and he has a really great command of his head voice, but he sings a lot into his head voice and his chest voice is really small. It's not as big as mine. So he doesn't have as much weight to get rid of as he's going up top. So um, as we're gonna do this again, I wanna play it one more time. Now, a, a tenor might go and get, uh, let me back this up so we can get the right notes here. Hold on. Okay. Right, he might wait to the third note. Go! He might wait to the third note in to release from chest and relax or, you know, a release into head or, or hand off into head voice, okay? Now this is important because I do this too all the time. But remember, I'm doing this to pace myself because I know my next note is... I want you to notice on Lady Won't You Save, I trick you again and it sounds like I'm going, I'm in chest still, but I'm back in head. Listen, just on the word save, watch. You hear that? Now my heart is also in head voice. Listen closely guys, listen really closely to this. People say, how do you do this? How do you do this? I'm telling you how I do it. Now, again, I can't emphasize, emphasize this enough. And that is that there is a lot of technique going on with the shape of the vowels, the training of the throat to stay open, an incredible amount of support to sustain it, and not over accentuating the vocal track, meaning going from vowel to vowel too big and not over singing my consonants and not uh, pushing too hard in the throat where it locks down and inhibits my ability to go back up. So listen closely again. Give was in head, me was in chest. Listen closely, guys. Listen closely. These are some pretty big secrets. Hey, can't Hear the transition? Head. Still head. Chest. Chest. Now, on that lady, ole was pure mixed voice. I'm half between chest and head, and you can hear it. I'm gonna play it back again. You can hear, you can hear how much chest, a girth of chest is in the sound combined with head voice, and then of course I go straight to head voice at the top. Take a quick listen, listen closely. Check it out. Oh. Lady. Oh, lady. lady, first part, mix. All head here. I did that was to show off because I go higher than Michael on this song and everyone hails this song as being, wow, it's the hardest song in the world to sing. No one can sing it higher. And I thought, you know, just to show the technique, not so much to like, 
you know, have people worship me as a singer, but I just wanted to show off the technique. Oh yeah, you think I've gone as high as I can go as a baritone? Watch, I'm gonna even go a little bit higher than Michael did, right? So I'm showing you all the negotiation of this because these are some really highly technical, very, very sophisticated, and um, there's a lot of nuance to this stuff that you would have no idea what's really going on here, but this is in fact what's happening. <laughs> back in the chest. Cool. So I think, you know, you guys get the picture of this. Now, how we train again, though, is like I said, I, I will set up my voice in this altitude of, of high range singing. I call it little boy voice in my course, where I can set my voice up nice and high. Now, where it becomes, like I said, really difficult is to sing something heavy on the bottom, something low, and then have to go into that expansive range that becomes very difficult. I do do that too on some other songs, but I'm also really extra careful to not over sing the bottom to accommodate that. Now, I wanna get into Katie because Katie, girls have a naturally higher registration, right? But here's the thing about that. I see people say that a lot and they say, oh, you know. So a lot of times, like some of the older videos I've done, like with Gabriela Gunchikaba and whatnot, um, I've deliberately pitched it up higher so it would be technically in the tessitura of their range. In this case, this song's so high, it's not necessary to do that. But um, I, I wanna show you this song because um, I'll never let you go, but the difference between the way Katie sings it and the way Michael sings it is she's actually belting mostly in chest voice all the way through. That is very, very, very difficult. Now where Michael is in his head voice, it's like a reinforced falsetto that he's built that matches the tonal quality of his chest voice. So Michael as a high tenor is already just kind of, you know, uh, residing in, in much more of like a, a really great bright, a perfectly tuned falsetto where she's actually belting through the song. So it's much more difficult. So you'd say, oh, for girls, it's a lot easier. Well, it's easier on the one hand for things that are in the in the mid voice section for belting, like a song like Jane by Mickey Thomas, or you know, um, uh, I'm trying to think of like you know Boston or some of these other tunes where it's a lot of mid voice belting. This is actually past belting in the mid voice. This is way up past Segunda Passaccia, way into head voice. So I wanted to clarify that so as we can uh, dissect hers, you can hear the power and range that we've worked on. By the way, this wasn't easy for her. We redid we did this over and over and over again until we finally got a take that we like um, and then and then here we are and and she didn't have anywhere near this kind of vocal ability ask her I challenge you you're welcome to contact these guys just ask him she's very approachable just say hey man you know what did Ken Tamplin do for her voice and let her do the talking but anyway with that said check it out Angel eyes, you have angel eyes, such a smile lights up my life Matichetics in chest through this part in the original. Your dream come true. Now I'm holding you, and I'll never, never let you go. Now I want to say one more thing about this. You know, your dream come true. Now I'm holding you. Right? I want to back this up a little bit for a different reason. Katie never had these warm, harmonic, resonant tones to her voice. And a lot of times girls that sing high, they just kind of sound like Minnie Mouse, right? Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse. Well, because we've worked so much on her chest voice, she's got a nice husky warmth to those high notes. So it's not just these shrill, piercing, screechy high notes like a girl just that can sing high. She's got the warmth and the beef of it, like I worked with Gabriella on as well, to have that, that kind of manly sort of tone for a girl, but also the range, uh, the range of a girl as well. Remember, a girl's chords or smaller, smaller than guys. I wasn't gonna make a little and you into a joke there. So, but anyway, so I'm gonna back this up just a little bit. Listen to the warmth of the tones of her voice. Hear that? Now watch. Let you go. Now she's not in a female falsetto head voice. She's belting her chest voice up there. She does mix sometimes, but for girls' voices also, I wanna say that's one thing that's unusual about like Lizzie Hale, for example, 
When she belts and gets a lot of distortion, because girls' voices, are their vocal folds are shorter, they distort differently than guys. Guys are able to kind of have that rattle, kind of that, you know, a uh, fry rattle, and they're able to kind of bring that into a more of a distorted tone. Girls are a lot different. Their chords are smaller, so they vibrate faster, so that rattle is harder for them to get, and it takes more effort for them to get to that sound. So that's why you don't see a lot of girls belting with a cool distorted sound in their upper chest voice, and we have to work on that. I cover that in my singing course also, so check this out. All chest, man. That's head. Insane. So. Right? When she's up there, that was head voice, and then she brought it back down into chest. And again, we worked on mixed voice, and she's got a she's developing a gnarly mixed voice too. So we're gonna do pretty stuff, not just heavy hard stuff like this. I want to showcase the full spectrum of the voice, how we can sing heavy like this, how we can sing light on some stuff. We've did some ACDC, we've done some Zeppelin, we've done a lot of different full spectrum uh, uh, songs with her stylistically. So let's continue. First time I She's killing it. My love to you, I surrender. Next. Full chest. We'll just dance with her. Because it's chest, it also requires considerably more abdominal strength. Okay, let me say this again. Because she's belting in chest, her stamina has to be a lot different than Michael's. Okay, in, in the sense of her, her pulling this chest up this high. Now, Michael's got an incredibly powerful uh, high um, falsetto, reinforced falsetto head voice. So, um, I'm not in any way diminishing or taking anything away from Michael's voice. We're all trying to get to his level. So, please understand where I'm going with this. I'm just showing you exactly technically how to get there. Now, I'm not seeing any other vocal coaches on the internet showing you this stuff, just doing it themselves, displaying students that do it. Um, and if they can't, then they don't know how and they cannot teach you how to do it. Let me say it again. If there's any other vocal coach out there that can't do it themselves and aren't displaying their students doing it, that I don't care what they say, they cannot show you how to do it if they can't do it themselves and they don't show that they're really having other people do it as well. So let's get back to Katie, here we go. Look at that pitch. Spot on pitch. I want to point something else out. Say, Angel eyes of love you give to me. Right? I want you to notice that her sounds are really small. The vowels are all there and all working together. Like we talked about a lot about you know vowel modification, how we modify from one vowel to the next. But she's keeping her sounds nice and small, but it's the resonance of her voice that we worked on that makes the voice sound bigger. So when we sing smaller tones like that, it's, it's deceiving. It sounds like the vowels are bigger than they are. They're actually smaller. They're more compressed in the sound. So I want you to really listen for that as we're going, listen, yeah, listen for that as we're going along. You never let me down. You're always by my side. And I'll never, never let you go. I will never let you go. Pretty cool, huh? When my heart starts to crumble. Oh, 
I wanna point something out. Now, Katie's gonna hate me for doing this, but it's all part of the process, guys, okay? If you notice, the line before this, she distorted a little bit and she got caught in the throat. Now, this is the difference of hyper infinitesimal, you know, nuance of different things like this. So, um, they're very subtle, subtle things. But I'm gonna show you where her voice collapses just a little bit, but her diaphragm kicks in extra hard to release to the throat to give her the ability to go up to get to this next note. But I want you to listen really close. Check this out. Shh, watch. Watch this. Cool. Now on the uh. uh Right? If she's going through that, you can hear her throat chirp. She got caught. She got caught singing the previous line a little too hard. What does she do? She doesn't panic. She, she goes, okay, I got this. I kick in with the diaphragm, I relax the throat again, and I wait a minute till my voice comes back and my throat seats and settles a little bit because I still gotta go up to get those notes and I've gotta close those vowel sounds a little smaller to get up to the top. Let me do this one more time. Listen. Listen to her voice slightly chirp as she goes through it and she kind of loses pitch ever so slightly through the section. Sorry, Katie. I just have to show it. We're all learning here, right? This is a tutorial for people to understand. So that we're all human is, I guess, a better way to say it. So check this out one more time. On that note, yeah! she brings it right in here, baby. She does it, she goes, okay, done with the throat, man. I can't pull any more up top. I am spent. I have to bring it right into the face if I'm gonna stick this last note, right? Let's continue. And she's back to the chorus. Now, I want you to notice is she's coming off of it. She's not killing it in the low end. She's kind of pulling back a little bit on the verse so she can pace herself again because she's got something else coming up that she knows she's got to pace herself for. So she's, got, she's not going, oh, no. She's not hitting it. She's, oh, no, let you go. She's kind of light and ginger on it as she's going through because she's saving her voice for the finale. Yeah. I want to point out one more thing on your all I need. Um, we learn a lot of tricks in my singing course. I mean, a lot of tricks. When to throw in a quick H, when not to uh, slam a consonant sound, when to switch to a vowel. If you get caught on one vowel, you can switch to another vowel to relax the throat, even though it's not the vowel or the word that you're singing. And we do this all the time. You'll never know that we're doing this. There's subtle changes, but they are there. So I want to point out one little section here. Watch this. Yeah, it's, it's instead of all I, it's all I, it's all I. I and she's not, she, we're using contiguous phrase singing. You've heard me use that term a lot. She goes, well, I Right? And we're not, you wouldn't know that I'm not saying the word. Well, I need, all I need. Well, I need. You assume I'm saying, well, I need. Right? But that's way more arduous in the throat. There's a lot more tension building in the throat when we split up the words and we slam vowels and consonant sounds going through it. So she's actually shifting the throat to just only sing her vowel sounds 
just like we would do when we work out our scales. So as I teach you in my singing course, as we go through and build muscle memory and strength in the vowel structure, then you apply that vowel structure that is consonant free, you use no consonants, to the actual songs and singing and only bring in the consonants as you need them to, to, to get people to hear and understand the words themselves. Okay, here we go. So um, again, there's a lot of negotiation going on here, guys. And uh, if you like what you heard, again, please like and subscribe. Um, and I have a singing course called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else. Again, you can find it at Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy. I'm doing most of this by request, guys. So if you have someone that you'd like me to do a song, a takedown of a song, uh, that we, especially if something we've already done, so I can showcase the video themselves, uh, please put it in the description and definitely check out my next video.